Hey guys, Spud here, as always. And today, I really had no idea we were due for a new DCS World open beta update. But when I woke up this morning, I was very pleasantly surprised. Now, the first thing I did, of course, was to open up the change log and look through all the different changes and additions to DCS with this new update. Now, the one thing that really jumped out at me and kind of slapped me across the face and said, I'm really important here, is the addition of a new AI tasking called Recovery Tanker for the Advanced Waypoint Actions tab in DCS. As I'm sure all of you mission makers out there know, creating carrier ops in DCS, whether for a single player mission or for a multiplayer mission for all your friends, is not exactly the most trivial task. So many things come into play that all have to intertwine together to make that carrier work seamlessly for all the players in the mission. Whether that's the AI, creating recovery tankers, the weather, all that stuff all comes into play. Now, this new addition to the mission editor is really going to simplify one of those rather non-trivial tasks to making your carrier work realistically and, of course, functionally for all the players. So before, to create a recovery tanker that would kind of follow along with the aircraft carrier, we had two options. We could either run a moose script, which definitely is rather advanced and not for those of you guys who are just hopping into the mission editor and learning how it works. Or we could kind of create a set of waypoints for the tanker to follow along in its orbit with the aircraft carrier. That wouldn't always work out perfectly and would add a whole other host of variables and things that could go wrong with the AI. But this new addition just simplifies all of that stuff, and I really hope that it is a first step towards bringing a lot of those more advanced scripts that are through other kind of scripting engines like Moose outside of DCS. I and I hope it brings more and more of that into the base version of DCS world where a lot of those functions are just simply a part of the mission editor. So let's go ahead and dig right on in. So our setup today is we've got ourselves an F-14 coming out of Israel down here. Maybe we brought an Admiral down to Israel to do some uh, some tours or whatnot of Israel. And now we're heading back to the aircraft carrier to bring the Admiral back to his flagship. And we might need a little bit of extra gas in case we have a bolter or two trying to get the Admiral back on board the aircraft carrier. So we'll go up to our aircraft creation tab up here, and let's go ahead and plop down a aircraft up here kind of to the northwest of our carrier group. Let's see how far that is. That's a little far, so let's bring them a little bit closer. Perfect. And of course, we'll need to change the task up here to refueling, and that will reshuffle your list of aircraft types. And so we'll select an S3B tanker. We'll make his skill ace, why not? And let's go ahead and rename him Recovery Tanker. I always highly, highly recommend that as you create a mission file in the mission editor, you go ahead and give everything a nice discrete name that's very, very recognizable to you. So that way you don't lose units in the shuffle of lots and lots of units around as you create a mission that can come up to, you know, hundreds of different groups of aircraft, tanks, static units, all that kind of stuff. And it'd be very, very easy to lose stuff. And that can be pretty darn frustrating. So next we'll come on down here to our waypoint actions. We'll add a new waypoint on top of the aircraft carrier. We'll get rid of that number two there that we accidentally put. So that way the tanker is already heading towards the battle group and doesn't have to make a whole bunch of turns and stuff to get towards the uh, aircraft carrier itself. When I'm making multiplayer missions, my kind of goal is to make things as simple as possible for the AI. So that way it doesn't have to think too much and thus reduce chances of the AI kind of going a little haywire on you. This includes things like making sure that I spawn in a tanker at the altitude that I want it to actually orbit at. And of course, at the speed I want it to orbit at as well. So we'll set an altitude about 6,000 feet. That's where the altitude at which a tanker is usually um, orbiting at for cyclic ops around an aircraft carrier. And we'll put them at a speed of about 250 knots of indicated airspeed. 
So that's going to be about 280 knots of ground speed. The way you can calculate that, guys, is pretty darn simple. Your indicated airspeed will degrade by about 2% on a standard uh, temperature and pressure day for every 1,000 feet of altitude you climb at. At 6,000 feet, that comes out to roughly about 25 to 30 knots of indicated airspeed degradation as you climb up to that 6,000 foot range. So just keep that in mind, and you can also use that and expand that out for your big wing tankers that are way up there, you know, flight level 180 or, or even higher than that, to really dial in exactly what the indicated airspeed of your tanker is going to be for your mission briefings for your pilots. Now, all we need to do here, set that for waypoint zero as well. And we've got our advanced waypoint actions down here. We've got tanker. That's perfect. That's what we need to get the aircraft to actually refuel other aircraft. And that's set by default. Let's go ahead and adjust our um, TACAN channel. We're refueling over the top of the George Washington. So why don't we put it as TACAN channel 73 Yankee. And the carrier will use 73 X-ray. Let's give it a call sign or identifier, I should uh, say, of text. Unit is just going to be that pilot's name there. That's totally fine. Now, here's the new addition that makes this just oh so simple and easy and just makes me so happy down in my mission maker heart here. Is after we add a new task here, we'll go to type, perform task, and then action is going to be this new action down here, recovery tanker. Now we have to tell it a group that it's going to orbit around, and that's going to be our George Washington Carrier Battle Group. And a speed will set the same speed of 280 knots of ground speed. Even though this speed here does not say ground speed, it is in fact in ground speed in knots. So it'd be great if Eagle Dynamics could change this a little bit just to avoid some confusion and specify that this is in fact going to be ground speed, not your indicated airspeed. Altitude will be 6,000 feet, 6,001 feet is totally within the standard deviation there. And we'll uncheck the last waypoint just so that way the aircraft will just start doing the action we want it to do right now. You can, of course, add, you know, some stop conditions or conditions for it to start doing this. For the most part, I just have tankers just kind of fly through the whole mission, and then they'll just keep on flying as the players start to despawn as the mission is over. Um, just so that way we don't accidentally have an AI start to stop its task in the middle of a large multiplayer mission. Cool. So we are all set up and ready to go. It's that easy. No more scripting anymore. No more tons and tons of waypoints trying to follow the carrier along and changing the orbit of that tanker to follow the carrier along. It's uh, just that easy. So um, why don't, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and hop into our F-14 Tomcat here and uh, see if we can get some gas and show you guys a demonstration of that tanker orbiting around. From my limited testing here, it seems that the tanker wants to orbit at roughly about a DME of 5 nautical miles away from the tanker in a nice racetrack orbit. Now what's also going to be really nice about this for you guys is because the tanker is now following the track of the carrier across the ocean, the BRC of the aircraft carrier is also going to be the heading of the tanker in the flat orbit, uh, flat sides of its orbit. So that makes it very easy to find the tanker and get, of course, hooked up with them and uh, get some juice. So here we go. So we're just heading right to the carrier. We'll just throw our Tomcat into a barometric altitude hold for now. We'll get her into cruise mode so we can get some nice uh, heading up there on our kind of useless HUD. And why don't we go out and take a look at our tanker? So we can see the aircraft carrier is right over there and he's flying right towards our point where he's going to start his orbit and we can see his indicated airspeed on the status bar down there at the bottom is 255 knots. So looks like we kind of uh, overdid our ground speed just a hair but 255 is pretty darn close to our 250 that we wanted. So speeding up time here, we can see that the jet is flying to 
somewhere close to about 5 DME to start his orbit track around the aircraft carrier. And you can see he always starts his orbit at the bow of the carrier as opposed to flying it from the stern. There we go, he's now in his orbit. Beautiful. So why don't we hop back into our Tomcat here and get some juice from our new recovery tanker. So let's go ahead and go down here and we'll set up 73 Yankee, we're already on transmit receive. Uh, Tacan is set for pilot. There we go, he's 16, point, 16 nautical miles away from us, just off at about our 11 o'clock. At least Jester's being nice to me today. Fuel 11,000. All right, and that's more than a Hornet took off from, from the deck, so I think we're good to go. But I hope you guys enjoyed that little demonstration there and watching me fail getting into the basket with my favorite airplane. And of course, forgetting where the probe switch is in one of my favorite airplanes. So, like I said, guys, it's just an awesome addition to DCS World's Mission Editor. And it seems that Eagle Dynamics is just really, really on a roll with making the mission editor that much better in DCS. And I really highly commend them for that because uh, mission making is such a massive and integral part of getting the most out of the DCS World Sandbox. Because as I always say to folks, DCS World is exactly what you put into it, is exactly what you're gonna get out of it. It can seem like a very dead and empty world when you first hop into DCS, but when you kind of realize how to make it alive and fun and very interactive, that's when you start to get the most out of the product. So I hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, fly safe out there and uh, enjoy this beautiful game, guys.